Hi there. I've got something exciting to share with you. I'm going to the 2018 AAW Symposium in Portland, Oregon. In just a couple of weeks, you're not going. What do you mean I'm not going? I mean you're not going, that's all. Why not? Because you're just a figment of my imagination, as you like to point out. Thanks for nothing. And I like to play with it. What can I say? So today, I'm going to show you how I just upgraded my bandsaw. I've been wanting to do this for a long time, finally got around to it, and I can't tell you how happy I am with it. So please, I hope you'll stick around, take a look at how I did it. Maybe it'll give you an idea how to do your own. And there are kits for doing more than just my particular bandsaw, so you can check that out at your leisure. So stick around and let's go tune up my bandsaw. Hi there, this is my bandsaw. It's a 14 inch Delta model. I believe you can still buy 14 inch Delta bandsaws, but they've changed a lot. And I sure hope they're better than they were when this one was built. Now there must be a million of them worldwide. They sold like crazy because they were fairly reasonably priced. Did a decent job if you weren't trying to be too finicky about what you were doing. But one of the problems with them is the guides. They're just these little blocks. You can buy what they call cool blocks, so they'll run a little better. But they're not that great because they're working on friction and not guiding it that well. Recently I was reading about a product made by Carter Products, made in the USA. Should be good quality stuff. And it's made to take this and replace all the assemblies, both on the top and the bottom. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to see what I think of it and let you know. And if you want to follow me along while I do this, please stick around. Well, the first thing I have to do is take the blade off. And to do that, I first need to remove these guards. Need a four millimeter hex wrench for these bolts. And now the tension lever is off, so I can slowly work this off here. And just pull this around. Need to take that insert out. Set this aside, then I'm going to start taking these blocks, these assemblies off. Well, I guess the first thing I should do is see what is in this package. The insulation instructions are on the back. Now inside, number of assemblies. The bearings seem just beautiful. mounting bolts and a couple of X keys. And some information. Great. Guess I can look through all this and then my first step now will be to take the table off. Now looking at this from below the table, there are two of these knobs I have to remove. And I should be able to just lift this table right off. One thing I should point out in case you have this same bandsaw and are wondering about these rails, they're for a fence that I bought to put on here. So I'll take this off now. Just that easy. I'll go set it aside and I'll be right back. With the 
table removed, I now have clear access to this assembly and will start by removing it. Loosening the two set screws will allow me to remove these two adjustment knobs. With the adjustment knobs out of the way, I now have access to these two screws and can remove those. That will allow me to remove that assembly. This screw was incredibly difficult to try to budge. It was frozen in place and I had to resort to drastic means and bring out the torch. After just a few seconds with the heat, the bolt came right out. With that out of the way, I can now install the new lower assembly. Just snugged up for now, adjustments will be made. All right, now it's time to make all the adjustments. Now you may notice, if your eyes are open, the table is missing. That's because it's so much easier to see what I'm doing on the lower guides without the table. And once the adjustments are made, I can either take the blade off, put the table on and replace the blade, or I can just very carefully slide the blade through the slot on the table, twist the table and drop it into place. Now, one thing you may have noticed, when I took the blade off, I didn't have any gloves on. I really suggest using gloves when you're using a blade like this. This is a three quarter inch blade with three teeth per inch. So they're very large, they're very sharp. The one I took off was a quarter inch blade with 16 teeth per inch. You barely even notice that they're there. Now the first thing I want to set is the alignment of the blade. Now when I first started using a bandsaw I was under the impression that the blade should be riding on exactly the center of the tire of the wheel. That's not true. What should actually happen is the bottom of the gullet between the teeth should be on the center of the wheel. Now my wheel is one and one eighth inch wide I believe it is. Yes it is. So I want to be 9 sixteenths from the edge of the wheel to the bottom of the gullet and that's where I've set it. If you have a bandsaw, you have instructions, I'm sure you know how to set the alignment but that's the one thing you might not know is that the gullet should actually be on the center. Now the next thing you want to set is the tension and this is a judgmental thing. I've had people tell me and I've read places where you need to take a fish scale and get a certain number of pounds or grams or whatever before it flexes. It doesn't work for me. I just go by feel and you have to do that on your own uh, unless there's a tool out there I don't know about but that's the way I do it. I just get it until it feels like it's right to me without getting too tight. I do not use the scale that's on the back. I don't trust it at all. This is feeling pretty good. So now when I turn it, it's actually riding right on the center where I want it to be. The bottom does not matter too much as long as the entire blade is on the wheel. You don't want it coming forward and being off of there obviously, or going toward the back and falling off. Now it's time to adjust the bearings. The first adjustment I want to make is forward and backward on the side bearings. You want the front of the bearing to be just behind 
the gullet between the teeth. Doesn't have to be very far, but you don't want it into the gullet because that's where the set starts on the blade. And if you're in there, you're gonna flatten these out. So I just loosen this. That should be good right there. I'll do the same thing on the bottom. I have moved the side bearings away from the blade. The first thing I want to adjust on the guides is the back one. I want to bring it up till it just touches the blade and then back it off just a hair. When I rotate this, I don't want the blade touching the bearing, but by putting just a finger pressure on there, the bearing's being rotated. I want to make sure that the bearings are free of the blade until pressure is put on the front when it's cutting wood. When I adjust the side bearings, just like when I adjusted the rear bearing, I do not want them to actually touch the blade. They are there to guide it. If it's touching all the time, it's simply going to wear out the bearings, it's going to damage the blade. So I want it to be just a hair away from the blade. just a little closer. Now when the blade is turned, the bearings are not moving. I'll do the same thing on the bottom. I will now use the same procedure on the bottom bearings. There you go. Now I can tell that it's cutting square. Well, there's one thing I still want to try. I have never been able to get this bandsaw to do a decent job of resawing. The blade was always wandering one way or the other. So I've taken a piece of oak. I've set the blade quite close to the fence. I don't want to get too close. I don't want to damage the blade or the fence for that matter. So now I'm going to run this through and see how that works. So I'll reposition the camera and get a shot of this. Considering that I'm using a three tooth per inch blade, 
I think that's a very nice cut. I'm real happy with that. Now, my calipers tell me that this is 0.027 inches, and that is less than a 32nd of an inch thick. For those who are metricated, it's about 0.66 millimeters. Now I can't imagine ever doing anything where I need anything thinner than that, so I didn't even try to go thinner. Just to make sure it wasn't a fluke, I did a second one, it's the same. I am thrilled with this upgrade to my bandsaw. Now I am in no way involved or affiliated with Carter products other than as a very happy customer. It's a bit of a pricey upgrade, but I should have done it years ago. Makes such a nice cut. Can't wait to get some real good use out of it. So I hope somebody got something out of that. I thank you very much for joining me today. And I really want to thank those who have subscribed. I really appreciate it. I've gone over 13,000 subscribers, which is phenomenal from what I was expecting or hoping for when I started doing this. So thank you very much. And if you liked what I did today, please click the like button. Let me know I'm doing something right. In the meantime, you have some good days in your shop. Be safe, and I hope you'll come back and join me next time. Take care now.